Come on, you work out at that special gym. You can put that on. They're absent. Yep. All right. Wait, that is. Showered, so maybe just <laughs> don't use this one. Um, so she vomited a lot. Then she had her first seizure. It sounds like a generalized seizure. They went to the vet. She had another seizure. Then took her to an ER. She had two more seizures. Super nice. Talked a lot about seizures and seizure management expectations, seizure log. So she's normal today. Super nice. Plan is to plan is to keep doing what we're doing. Call us if she has more. Let us know if it's more than a six week, less than a six week interval. We'll make changes if we have to okay. in the future. So staying at sixteen weeks per kick with the plan of yeah. Of we'll probably have to some. increase it at some point, but Locally. they're happy with that. Mm -hmm. okay. She's a little bit shy, but nice. Oh. 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 This is a There you go. Is that weird? I think it's weird. Oh, 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 So I know Dr. Vita kind of chatted um, with you about about everything. Um, her exam's normal. She's alert. She's aware of what's going on. She's not incoordinated. The nerves around her face are normal. She knows where her feet are. So her neurological exam is normal. Um, in, in general, there are three main things that can cause seizures. What a, a seizure is is an abnormal burst of electrical activity in the front part of the brain. Um, normally there's electrical activity in the brain, but what a seizure is is when there's too much of it happening all at the same time. And what we see on the outside, dogs go stiff, they fall on their side, their limbs paddle, um, sometimes they poop, sometimes they pee, sometimes they salivate, occasionally they'll vomit. Um, it can last anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes, and then most dogs go back to normal, you know, whether it's a few minutes or sometimes even takes a day to go back to normal. Some dogs act blind after the seizure, some dogs seem confused, some seem tired, um, but most of the time they, they go back to, um, to themselves. We should err on the side of thinking that it's idiopathic epilepsy and more seizures are coming and be treating her with the medication, albeit I'm okay with doing it at this low dose that she's already at. Um, <clears throat> so I think we should err on that side. And yes, if she goes, you know, eight months, nine months, a year without any seizures, um, at that point we can start decreasing the medications and trying to, to take her off. So um, plan right now, um, my understanding of the plan right now is we're going to just do the Keppra. Um, we're not going to do any sort of MRI right now um, and continue with the medications. Yeah. Yep. So anything, if it's just one seizure less than two minutes, we can just kind of monitor her. Yep. Just document with her. Document it. Try and take a deep breath. I know it's scary. Give her a space. Um, give her a space. She's not going to swallow her tongue. Don't stick your fingers in her mouth. Okay. Um, you know, but if she's somewhere next to a pool, up on a loft near the yeah. stairs, you know, keep her in a safe spot. But um, don't put your hand in her mouth or anything like that. Okay. Cool. All right. What do you think, kiddo? <laughs> Who's out there? You good? You want to get out of here? Alrighty, well nice meeting you. Let me get the uh, prescription together for you. Um, I'll bring that up and we'll want to see you back in about six months. Sure, uh, thank you so obviously much. seeing her if there's a problem, but thank let's you, plan for six months, okay? Thanks, Doc. Well, at least it just gives them a little bit of it. Yeah. It's okay, we're just going to listen to you. Yes, you're probably nice. I guess while we're all here, if we, if we want, we can get him up and check his... See if he does anything? Yeah, let's foster our reactions. <laughs> Come on, you work out at that special gym. Yeah, you, you can put that on. They're, They're right. absent. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Wait, let's put this like this. Buddy? 
All right. So if someone's getting a history, yeah. you're going to eat. Yeah, and, and then, then we'll, we'll talk to them. Yeah, I was just going to get the same thing. I'm like, I think it's going to be a good one. There you go. That's what I'm going to have to do. But he wags his tail. That's what I'm happy like. I fell asleep in Diego's bed last night. And... At around, he, he cried at maybe like 2 a.m. and his pillow was up against. He was like sleeping like this, like really uncomfortable. So I just like grabbed his leg and flattened <laughs> him out. Slowly got worse since August, but over the past two weeks has been much worse. Um, he now trips and falls on the right pelvic limb, um, slipping out, trouble getting up. They went to see Dr. Tucci last week, who did some X-rays. Um, and then after the x-rays, he seemed worse. That's the last time he walked. Take a break, Jen. Where am I going, though? <laughs> what room? Oh, oh! <laughs> now you need her, now you need her. Oh, oh, oh my God. Thank you. <laughs> um, but we're certainly concerned about a neurologic problem in his case, okay. uh, both based on the exam as well as what you've described to Jen. So with the kind of knuckling, scuffing of the legs, getting weak, things like that, those all point to a neurologic problem. Um, when we look at him today, he doesn't have good reflexes in the front legs. So when I pinch his toes, kind of in between the web of his toes, he should immediately pull that leg back, sedated or not. He does it really nicely in the back legs, but not so great in the front legs for wow. us. Mm -hmm. So. That tells me that that reflex is not there, which means there's some interruption of the signal from kind of his toes up to his spinal cord and back down to his toes that say, perform that reflex. Um, he does seem a bit uncomfortable in certain, when we have his head in certain positions, We're just kind of trying to prop him up. Um, so I, I'm suspicious that maybe he's a little bit painful. Um, and he doesn't replace when we flip over all of four of his paws, he doesn't flip them back nicely, telling us that he doesn't quite know where his legs are in space. Overall, that all points to a neurologic problem, um, and most likely in his neck region, so in the spinal cord in the neck. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about a, an older dog, an older Rottweiler specifically, there's a few things that we do think about that could be causing those signs. With kind of a, a slow onset, we've got to think about a number of things. Of course, we always think about the bad things like tumors. Um, that's certainly on the list and definitely something we're concerned about, just given what you've seen at home and what we're seeing on exam. But that doesn't mean that that's the only thing. Um, right. So things like slip discs can definitely cause the signs that we're seeing. Right. Um, you know, if it kind of bulged and bulged and bulged and then all of a sudden, you know, got to the point where his spinal cord was being too compressed, that could cause, you know, kind of the signs we've seen and the progression we've seen at home. Uh, to be honest with you, if he wasn't such a great dog, I'd just go ahead and put him down. Sure, He's yeah. Like, one of the best dogs we've ever had. Yeah, I understand that. I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot to swallow. Probably a lot to oh, take in yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. And if he howls, don't freak out. He learned it from her. From the husky. Yes. I grew up and with the uh, with two huskies, so yeah. I, I know the, that. Cry. The siren, he'll, yeah. like, he'll howl. Yeah. Really he understands how a cool. Rottweiler howls, but he does. Kind of cool. <laughs> Hello. How are you? How are you? How are you? If we find a slipped disc. We'll call you um, before surgery, we'll call you after surgery. He'll probably stay with us close to a week or so. Most dogs, you know, five to seven days, just he's pretty severely okay. affected. All right. Thank That's you. Dr. Yeah. Thank you. So he is dog's name right, so he's going to take extra special you got care. got it. Right? <laughs> His rabbit.
so um, I, I took a look at Poochie. I just wanted to come introduce myself. Um, so a, a bunk bed, um, part of the bunk bed kind of fell and, and hit him and hit her in the head. So as soon as that happened, she was abnormal and unable to walk. Yeah, she couldn't. She couldn't, but she couldn't turn around. <clears throat> she like all limbs were, were moving, but the neck was like it was like circular. It was, okay. Um, then we picked her up, and she had convulsions within an hour. She had like three, maybe like fifteen, like twenty minutes apart. They were like maybe it was ninety minutes probably. She salivated like crazy, sure. and her right right eye was a little sort of like a little bit out, okay. not out, but it was like it didn't look in proportion. Yeah, okay. and then in the morning the eye was was, was fine. She slept with me all night. She wouldn't move. She was very listless. It was okay. So, when we have this history that we were normal and something fell, and immediately after being hit, we have a seizure, we have to worry about trauma to the head or head trauma. There are a couple different things that can come along with head trauma. You can get, you know, bruises or concussions. You can get broken bones. There can be bleeding in the brain. So even under the um, umbrella of head trauma, there are different things that can happen along with head trauma. And that's where an MRI comes in, is to find out, one, is it traumatic, and two, um, what sort of damage has been done, assuming it's traumatic. So that's why we're recommending an MRI. Um, but the downsides of MRIs are they're expensive and they require anesthesia. So the second option, is that we don't do an MRI and we try, um, we, we do some blood work um, and we try some medications and observations. Sometimes dogs can get better with just time and, you know, with just time and nursing care. So the advantage of that is it avoids anesthesia, it avoids the costs of doing an MRI. The downsides are we don't know is there something that. Is there something broken? Is there something that's going to get worse, like active bleeding? Um, or is it not even related to the trauma? And do we have something like a brain tumor and it just happened that this fell? So I think that's less likely, but we don't know that without doing tests. So I think it's reasonable to hospitalize overnight, do some um, blood work, uh, do some medications, and play it sort of day by day. I would not expect her to be 100% better tomorrow. Um, what we want to see is that she's showing signs of improvement. Um, you know, start moving that left side or holding herself up. Those would be, you know, things that we can send her on. Yeah, yeah fr from the amount of information of what you're telling me and what I'm seeing on her examination, um, I suspect it's a problem in the right front part of the brain. I hope that it's all due to the trauma and if it is due to the trauma, many dogs get better with time and nursing care. So I certainly would give her the opportunity. Okay, and, and how long do you think usually it takes? For we play it day by day. So um, I don't want to set a line in the sand that within four days she has to be better. You know, if she's getting better, um, even if she's not 100% or even 75% better four days from now, I'm going to be okay with that as long as she's moving in the right direction. If she starts getting worse, if she's having more seizures, if the right side of her body doesn't work, if she's not responding to us, um, talking to her, or you know, knowing where she is, those are things that are going to worry us. Um, but right now we're, in the short term, we just want things to not get worse and hope that they get a little bit better. I don't expect them to be 100% better by tomorrow or even you know, the next day, but we just want to see that we're trending in the right direction. Okay. Sorry you're going through this. Um, she's very sweet and you know, we'll keep you in the loop yeah, how things progress, okay? She's everything to us. Okay. All right, we'll take good care of her, okay? Thank you. Got Thanks. Be right back. So prior to the MRI, we were concerned that possible causes for rowdy would be things like a slipped disc, things like a tumor, um, those were our two big main concerns. Um, just based off of the progression over um, a prolonged period of time of a couple months, we were much more worried this was gonna be a tumor. We did not find a tumor, we found a slipped disc at C5, C6 in his neck, 
Um, that's actually the most common place that I see a slip disc in Rottweilers. Um, it's a large disc, so um, fantastic news. This is something that we've got really good chances of fixing. So Dr. DeVita is in there right now, and I'm about to join him.